Subject to this presentation is OLE for Process Control, or OPC. Uh, so this is what Scriptchart OPC relies on to communicate with a PLC. So OPC, it stands for OLE for Process Control, and uh, the purpose of it is to provide a bridge between a PC, a Windows PC, and a PLC that's controlling some machine. So the a key concept is that uh, the OPC server resides on some PC, and that's what's communicating to the PLC. This server can serve data to any number of OPC clients that read the data from the server. And typically, the client software resides on the same PC as the server software. It doesn't have to be the case, but that's generally how it's done. And um, Stripchart OPC is basically a client software, and it's relying on a server installed on the user's computer to uh, access the data in the PLC. So the subject uh, today, we'll talk a little bit more detail about uh, the server, what servers um, are used, and a little bit on how to configure uh, RS links. So um, when you uh, purchase a server, um, and there's different providers, um, one example is uh, Rockwell RS Links, another is um, uh, Kepware, KepServer, uh, Matricon also supplies uh, OPC servers. How would you choose one versus another? Uh, first of all, what PLC are you trying to connect to? Uh, if it's a Allen Bradley, uh, Control Logix, RS Links might be a good choice. Uh, the only downside of RS Links is uh, it's quite expensive, at least $2,000. Uh, if you've got a GE9070 PLC, you may uh, choose a KEP server product or a Matricon product, which um, offer a um, wider range of PLCs they support and also a little less expensive. Okay, so um, let's go through an example of uh, setting up uh, RS links to connect to a PLC. So I have uh, RS links open here, and um, you're probably used to um, browsing what uh, connections you've established in your configuration. So here's where you would configure your connections, and here's all the different connections I have configured. Um, so when you set up an OPC um, server, uh, you have to provide uh, paths to the PLCs, and those are called topics in uh, RS links speak. So this is uh, done through this uh, menu item, DDE slash OPC, topic configuration. So each of these topics connects to a uh, certain processor through the uh, configured connections that you would browse. So for this example, I'll create a new topic and I'll just call it test. And I'm going to connect this um, as imagining I have a connection over data highway. I'm, I'm currently not connected over data highway, but uh, I can use it as an example. So I can pick a path to a processor, and uh, let's assume this one was connected. If it was connected, I wouldn't have this uh, red uh, box. And when I have test connected to that uh, processor number one there, that establishes the OPC link. So um, click on test and it's connected to this processor. So um, that's about all you have to do to establish a um, connection to a PLC through RS links. We now have a topic called test that's connected to this processor. Um, if you wanted to be able to uh, browse offline, there is a way to set up a connection to use symbols under this uh, data collection tab. Click on use symbols and selecting a database, um, it offers different formats for the uh, tag uh, list. If you have a PLC5, you will want to save your RSLogix5 file as a .rsp. So you'd open the uh, logic file, save as .rsp. If you have a Control Logix project, uh, all you have to do is browse for the ACD. So no export required, you can use the uh, logic file directly. So let's assume that was our, our case here. So then I would just uh, browse for um, some projects ACD.
and now I could browse that topics uh, symbols without being connected to the PLC. So that is how you configure a topic in RS Links to connect to a PLC. Um, one comment about RS Links, uh, you have to be running something other than light. Uh, classic OEM in my case, or uh, Gateway, or any of the versions of RS Links that supports an OPC server. The light version of RS Links comes pre well, it comes as a part of uh, Control Logics or any logic editing package that you purchase. So they always give you the RS Links uh, software uh, to allow the Logics program to communicate with a PLC. However, the light version doesn't support uh, OPC server, and uh, this often causes problems when updating um, a, a Logics package. Uh, people make the mistake of also installing the um, server or the RS links that comes with it and overriding their um, classic OEM or whatever other version of RS links they might have had previously installed and they lose their uh, OPC server. Uh, the um, software package for RS links is actually, there's only one version of it. Uh, what features are enabled uh, depend on what's been activated in the activation manager. So if you've lost your uh, OPC server when you've updated uh, Control Logics or um, RS Logics 5, uh, what you need to do is um, uh, reset your activation for RS links. You don't need to do a full reinstall. Okay, so that's uh, RS Links, and uh, let's uh, browse uh, through Stripchart OPC and look at some variables. So here's a Stripchart OPC program, and I'm going to browse through RS Links. So here's the OPC servers I have installed on my computer. I'll choose RS Links OPC server and I'll connect. And I'm going to choose this one because I have this uh, logic file open. So I'll show the data structure, how it appears in Stripchart through an OPC browse versus how it appears in the ACD. So I've browsed online and looked at the uh, data structure uh, in that processor. So um, let's look at the processor now. Here's the ACD file. And what I'm looking at is first the data structure in the controller scope data. So I've opened up the controller tags and the first entry I see is a matrix of reels called data trap data. And so if I look at what I found uh, browsing strip chart, I see a folder called data trap data. So if I open that folder, it'll browse into that um, matrix and show each element of the matrix. So when you see this uh, icon appearing different than a folder, that is an actual address, a PLC address with a, in this case, a real value that you could trend in Stripchart OPC. So back to the ACD file. Uh, we have um, an array here of dint um, a boolean and all this data is available in strip chart. Let's go down to um, well let's look at the uh, tags in a pr program scope. So here we go into the tasks folder and let's take a look at uh, compressor monitoring. So um, you don't necessarily have to have multiple tasks but the, this particular uh, ACD file is organized in that way. Uh, so here's a subfolder called compressor monitoring and it has its own program scope tags. So let's open up the compressor monitoring uh, tags. So here's the uh, different PLC addresses in the control in in the program scope tags here. So now let's browse those through stripchart OPC and uh, it's hard to tell what's program scope versus controller scope, uh, but if you look closely, you'll see program colon and then the name of that task. So here, compressor monitoring is the one we were looking at in the ACD file. Let's open that up, and we found all these elements. Uh, some of these have, um, you know, they're more complex variable that have some variables underneath this um, structure, of, um, I guess we call it a, a class of a variable. 
and others are just um, directly accessible through the program scope. So uh, let's say this analog for what appears to be discharge pressure. So uh, that's a, a little overview of how the data structure when you're browsing in StripChart OPC correlates to the data structure in a uh, control logics file. RS Logics 5 is a little bit easier. They don't really have this concept of uh, program scope tags. Everything is basically a controller scope tag. All right, so that is uh, using RS Links. Now let's uh, look at a different OPC server, uh, KEP server. So uh, I have KEP server installed on my computer, and I have it uh, connected to one PLC. Uh, let's open up KEP server. So uh, KEP server is a little different than RS Links in that it doesn't automatically uh, browse into the data structure in the PLC. You have to define the data structure yourself. So in this uh, OPC, uh, basically a topic, um, same kind of idea as um, RS Links, I've uh, got a connection to a PLC and I've created manually all these addresses. So these addresses weren't automatically discovered by a KEP server. I had to uh, create them, edit them myself in KEP server. So it's a lot less, uh, less convenient than uh, RS Lynx, uh, but um, it works fine and it's a lot less expensive. Uh, this package was about $1,000 compared to $2,000 for RS Lynx. So uh, back into StripChart OPC, let's uh, see how it looks browsing in that uh, KEP server server. So I'm going to disconnect, and now we'll connect. Oh, I better browse servers again. And there's that KEP server package. Connect to it. And uh, I have uh, one to topic set up. And uh, there's the Opal unit. And here's all the tags that I've created that correspond to PLC variables. So let's pick a variable and trend it. So I've added a couple variables by double clicking them and they show up on my uh, pen setup table. And then I can sample them. And uh, notice how the values, well, if you're familiar with uh, these turbines, uh, um, they don't go over 100% speed. I you would expect to see nothing more than 100 here. That's because this is a raw uh, input value which is scaled 0 to 4095 equals 0 to 120. So I can change the scaling on the fly and it'll um, rescale all the data that I've captured previously when any changes are made to the scaling. So uh, I've changed the scaling to um, match what I said it was and there I see some more believable values. If I look at the plot, uh, it changed the scaling on all the data I'd uh, collected from time zero. So uh, that's about all I wanted to cover for OPC servers. Uh, other than one other comment, in that uh, sometimes people have encountered problems with uh, their core components being changed with an OPC server installation. There's some files that uh, run in the Windows system that um, are necessary to support OPC communications. And uh, when you install an OPC server or even a client, it can uh, sometimes uh, modify those files. And there have been some issues with uh, Windows 7 64-bit versus 32-bit incompatibilities. So I've actually posted uh, the core components files uh, for both uh, flavors, 64 versus 32-bit, on my website.